Over the last several months, IPNO and other divisions throughout the university have been paving a path forward for the Rutgers community. Police and emergency services, facilities, environmental health and safety, and many others have worked tirelessly to regain what is important to us as a university community, our shared experience. To reflect that work and to begin our walk along this path, IPNO from Home is now this week in IPNO. We hope you will join us as we continue to bring you conversations from our campuses. Okay, so welcome to the first episode of This Week in IPNO, formerly known as IPNO from Home. We have a, a recurring guest coming on today. We have, oh, and we're also outside for the first time. Uh, we have Tony Calcato. Tony, thanks for coming on. Well, thank you. As a matter of fact, since we're outside, let me take this off and make it just a little bit easier for the time that we're out here. Um, it's a pleasure to be back. I'm happy to see that uh, this time uh, you actually picked me to be the first recurring guest. And, uh, but I have to tell you, I'm really happy about being on campus again. And I'm happy that um, I'm going to be able to talk a little bit about all that we've done since the last time I uh, spoke to you in June. So since the last time we talked to you, a lot has changed in the world and a lot has changed with Rutgers. How has your day-to-day -day operations looked different since the last time we spoke? Well, I think um, let's start with did anybody really expect in November that we would still be telecommuting, still be spending a lot of time at home, still not being able to go out and sit in restaurants and, and do the things that we were so used to doing, right? So. So we've had to adapt, and uh, the university continues to adapt. It continues to make changes. Since June, when we first spoke, we were already working on and writing the Return to Rutgers document. We've since finalized it. We've sent uh, it out to the Office of the Secretary of Higher Education. We spent the summer preparing um, our buildings and preparing uh, everything about the campus in order to at some point hopefully welcome you all back so it's been a busy summer um, went by quickly for sure I guess the flip side to it is that what else would we have done over the summer so the first time that we spoke with you was really early on in the work from home process and uh, you know what was it like trying to run operations from home and, and how has it changed again since we started to come back? So uh, let me start by saying this. I, I have to give a plug to our people in um, IPNL, right? Institutional Planning and Operations. These are the essential people at the university. Uh, whether you're a fire alarm technician or you're a custodian or you're a mechanic or a police officer or you're working in material services and doing signage or whatever it may be, you have been here every day since the beginning of this pandemic. So. Um, in many respects, we've never left the campus. And while I've had an opportunity at times to work from home, I've also continued to come to the campus, but it's a much different dynamic. So I sit in a building pretty much by myself many times. Um, the interaction with people just doesn't exist. And um, it makes it that much more difficult when you're trying to collaborate and trying to pull plans together that would bring us back in a, in a safe and uh, an effective and healthy manner. But again, I, I need to thank our people. I, you all have just really stood up. You have made this a better place by your presence throughout this entire pandemic. Um, you've led by example, you've helped others, and you've made sure that the university remained open and serving our students throughout and our patients throughout this pandemic. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. So Tony, what, what kind of precautions has Rutgers put in place to make the campus uh, safer, a safer place for people to return? So we um, built out a whole toolkit with all the best practices that either the CDC or any public health guidance that we could find, um, different associations, whether it be HVAC associations or any other types that might have been out there. So the toolkit informed our really 
rebranding all of our buildings in the age of COVID and rebranding our campuses. So if you come onto campus today, you'll see all of the signage. You'll see all of the plexi barriers. You'll see uh, partitions. You'll see all of those pieces that really protect people um, from one another. And um, then you'll, there's the things you won't see. You won't see what we've done with our HVAC systems, you know, quietly behind the scenes so that um, we can adhere to some of the professional guidance that may be out there. You won't see us uh, flushing the buildings so we make sure that there's no stagnant water. So there are a number of uh, pieces that people will never get to see that have, again, been done behind the scenes by, you know, our... Um, by our employees, by our associates, by our colleagues and, and our co-workers, but all of these pieces are in play. But I have to say, we can COVID potentially proof the buildings, uh, although that's probably a misnomer. But the reality is that it's really up to us. We are the best protection against this infection, getting infected or this virus, I should say, right? It's really all about wearing face covering, watching our distance, and washing our hands. That's the best protection. It, again, it's up to us. We're the ones that have to take responsibility for watching out and taking care of each other. Is there a general timeline that people should start to expect to come back to campus? Or are there any specifics, like for example, do you expect there to be 25% capacity at March? Or are you reevaluating each day as it comes? So we continuously reevaluate. Um, we, over the summer, we plan for the for the spring semester. While we are going to have um, additional housing and students on campus, and while there are some additional offerings and face-to-face -face, uh, classes, the reality is that we were nowhere, nowhere like what we were in the fall of last year. Not this fall, but the fall of last year, or even the beginning of our spring semester of this year. So we reevaluate all the time. We learn how to live with this virus because that's really what's called for until there is an effective um, vaccine against it, until there are better therapeutics. And there'll never be a switch. I, I don't see that happening when it comes to um, especially our associates, our colleagues coming back to work. We're not going to one day say, okay, everybody come on in, we're ready to get going. It'll be a phased approach. It'll be, um, I'm sure, um, it'll be based on what our business needs are and how we best serve our patients and students as we move forward. So it'll be a slow approach as we continue to repopulate our campuses. I, I anticipate, I hope, um, and I look forward to that, uh, you know, in the fall of 20. 21 that we would be back to whatever our new normal is and then we're going to have to evaluate what that means right does that mean that um, many of us will be spending time working from home while others are here and rotating or doing all those types of things that create a new normal that that kind of um, uh, where we don't repopulate the campuses to 100%. So, so we'll work through that. We're working through expanded testing at the same time. There'll be more coming out on that. Um, we're working through every piece of what it means to return to Rutgers. But, you know, we may have rotating schedules. I, I can foresee a difference in the new normal. Um, but what we do need to do is understand that um, we are built for congregation, we're built for collaboration, and we have to find all the right tools in order to be able to do that in a way that's productive for all of us. I know a lot of people talk about, you know, they're dying to come back to work. And we're trying to put the tools out there um, so that that could happen. At the same time, we recognize that the K-12 system in the state of New Jersey is in somewhat of a flux as they try and figure out um, how to move forward as well. And as the second largest employer in the state of New Jersey, um, we have a responsibility to, working, to work with our employees who are parents that are teaching from home and, and have issues because today you can't get grandma to watch um, the kids. You can't get an, an aunt or an uncle to watch the kids or a babysitter. Um, you know, we live very much in, in these congregate bubbles within our family. So 
um, we understand that that's a challenge and one that we need to work towards uh, making better for everybody that works with us. So you talked a little bit about some of the precautions that we're taking and uh, you know I'm sure there some people are going to be uneasy about coming back to campus. Um, is there anything you want to say to those people to ease their mind and welcome them back to campus? So um, everyone has their own level of comfort and uh, it's a it's a level that needs to be worked towards. There's no on off switch. Um, I can tell you that that your coworkers um, have worked diligently at creating safe space on campus. We've done all the pieces that we could possibly do and put those into place. We've put all the guidelines in place, um, everything from how to ride an elevator to how many people should be using an exit at the same time. So we will continue to do that. I'm going to go back to what I talked about a little earlier. This is a shared responsibility and a, and a shared sacrifice in many ways. We also need you to do your part in keeping not only yourself safe, but others safe. So those three W's, they mean everything. You know, wear a face covering, watch your distance, wash your hands. It means everything. That's not a joke. It's not fake. It is real. Take it from one who has experienced this virus. It is real and it will help keep you safe. But, but I fully, John, I fully expect that it will take time for people to feel comfortable. If you think about, a little bit, about the way you felt maybe six months ago when you went to a store, and uh, I remember Paul talking about washing down the groceries as they came in the door. Um, I'm pretty sure he's not doing that now because you start to, to understand what this is all about. So if you think about the things you did six months ago that you no longer do to keep yourself safe because you're more comfortable now, I think that that's what will happen as you return to campus as well. So the campus is getting vibrant. It's looking great. I can't help it, by the way, to all of you that are out there that these three guys decided to pick the noisiest place on campus. But, you know, They'll get it right at some point. Um, so we'll continue to, to work um, in implementing the guidelines as we, as we understand them, the public health guidelines, working with RBHS, working with Dr. Strom and Dr. Gracias um, to make sure that, that we do everything we can do to make it safe. But I implore you, I beg of you, to help us to do that, not just on campus, by the way, not just on campus, but do it when you go to the store, do it when you're out, do it when you're even walking around. Um, they're pretty simple, basic pieces, but they make a big difference. Um, well, Tony, thank, thanks for coming on and, uh, and for giving us all that information and for being a, a, our trial run on the podcast <laughs> outside. Um, but yeah, if, there, if, there's, uh, if there's any other signing off message that you'd like to tell uh, everyone, well, I'm, I may not get an opportunity, so I want to wish everybody a very happy Thanksgiving, a safe Thanksgiving. Um, it's coming up in about uh, two weeks already, unbelievably so. I also wanted to tell you to look out um, for, for some more video messages as we now start to head towards the spring, um, the spring semester. Uh, and I look forward to seeing all of you back here so that um, we can enjoy not only each other's company, but a beautiful workspace all across all of our campuses. And again, stay safe. The three W's, key and most important, don't lose sight of that. So thank you all very much. And guys, thank you for having me.